Hello and welcome back to this free video series where you'll learn how to produce better music and mixes in Logic Pro 10. I'm Rob Maces of musicianonamission.com and in this video you're going to learn more about the stock compressor in Logic Pro 10. Now one of the things I love about Logic Pro is the quality of the stock plugins and the compressor I think is my favorite. Compared to the compressors in any other software it's just incredible. You have so many options, it models so many different types of compressor so you can get loads of different sounds and tones out of it. It's easy to use, it's versatile, it's powerful. So it's an incredible plugin, especially for a stock plugin. So in this video, you're gonna learn more about uh, the features of that and also how to use it because it can be daunting at first. If you've used it before, there's a lot of options because it is so powerful. So in this video, you'll learn more about that and also just compression in general, how to approach compression strategically um, so that you can improve your mixes and feel more confident every time you reach your compressor. Now, if you do find this video useful, be sure to check out the full course. There's a link in the description below. And inside that, we're gonna go into a lot more depth in Logic Pro 10 and go over every feature. But for now, let's dive in with this and look at the compressor. So let's go to compressor. And we'll start with using compression on vocals. So, just let's look at this layout for a second. So we've got across the top here, these buttons are different types of compressor and these model um, different analog compressors, different real world compressors uh, with different algorithms and slightly different tones. Now these sound different for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's because they kind of have a, an EQ curve to the compressor. Other times it's because they have a different knee size which is something I'm going to talk about more in a second. You can see some of these you can't control the knee, whereas here you can. Um, and also there's a few different things in the background that's different between them. But let's start with the kind of stock compressor. This is the first one that opens up. So other than these controls at the top, we can now look at the layout from left to right. So we've got input gain, which we want to leave at zero. And then we've got the main compressor section. Now to break down what a compressor does, it essentially is like asking someone to automatically move the fader up and down. And if we said to someone, well, when the vocal gets too loud, I want you to turn it down a bit. And when it gets too quiet, I want to turn it up a bit. That's kind of what a compressor does. It makes the dynamics more consistent. And it does this by compressing the loudest bits by bringing them down and then bringing the overall volume of the track up. So that's why it's called a compressor, even though normally compressors are associated with an increase in volume. And that's again, because it compresses the loud bits and then brings the overall volume up. So when we're compressing the peaks, we need to set a threshold. And this is when we're kind of telling the compressor, well, when the vocal hits minus 24, I want you to start, if that was minus 24, I want you to start um, compressing it and uh, as soon as it hits minus 24 I want you to bring the volume down a bit well after you told it at what volume you want it to compress the audio you then need to tell it how much and that's the ratio so a ratio of one to one would be no compression and that's because for every one decibel it went above the threshold which is minus 24 it would only allow in one so it would be the same but if we set it to two now we're saying for every two dBs that the volume goes above the threshold, only let through one. So we're halving it. So if the audio, in this case the vocal, goes 10 dBs over the threshold, it will only actually compress and only 5 dBs will come through the compressor. And then of course we can go into crazy compression ratios like uh, 5 to 1 and above where we're saying only let through one decibel of volume increase for every five dB that the source increases. So again, if the lead vocal went 10 dB above the threshold, this time we're only actually letting through two. And once you get up to 30 and above that, that's where we start to call it a limiter. Because what's happening now is instead of controlling the dynamics, we're essentially saying, well, as soon as it hits 24, I don't want you to increase the volume. Because at a 31 ratio, you know, the, the volume would have to increase by 30 decibels for there to be uh, one dB let through by the compressor. So that's what we call a limiter. A lot of the time we're going to be between two and five uh, ratio if we're working with vocals, guitars, stuff like that. You can be more aggressive, but I recommend you stick kind of between those. 
um, unless you have a particular reason not to. After that, we've got makeup gain because once we've told the compressor to clamp down on the loudest peaks and we tell it when to clamp down and then how much to clamp down by, we then need to bring the volume up because by reducing the volume with the loudest peaks, we've essentially reduced the volume of the whole track. But this means we can bring up the overall volume, which means the quieter bits now get louder. So a lot of the time, if you're reducing the gain by three dBs on this meter, then you wanna add three dBs of makeup gain to bring it back up to the same level. And this meter is really important. This is what's gonna tell us how much we're reducing the volume. And there's also a graph view which I'll go over more in a second. When you're adjusting your makeup gain, make sure you turn off auto gain. And I always turn this off and I recommend you do the same and do it manually with this gain control. Now you can see there's a few more settings down here. We've got knee, attack and release. Let's not worry about knee for now, but first of all, let's talk about attack and release. So we're telling the compressor when it hits minus 24 dBs to reduce the volume at a ratio of 2.4. But then how quickly does it do it? Does it just instantly react and reduce the volume? And then as soon as the volume goes back below the threshold, do we then instantly release the compressor uh, and stop reducing the gain? Well, that's where the attack and release time come in because this dictates how quickly the compressor reacts to the audio. So if we set the attack time to 10 milliseconds, what we're saying is as soon as the audio hits the threshold, so if we hit, Say for example, the audio is at minus 14 dB, which is 10 dB louder, and we're using a ratio of two to one. We're saying reduce it by half, but take 10 milliseconds to do it. And then as soon as the audio drops to maybe minus 25, so now we're below the threshold, I want you to release the compressor over 50 milliseconds. Now, obviously these are really, really small uh, measurements of time is milliseconds so it's not noticeable in the sense that you can hear it fading in and out instead what it does it allows us to go on a micro level uh, and adjust how much the compressor is reacting to the attack and the transient of the note so if you have a really fast attack time like zero millisecond the compressor is going to react immediately and clamp down on the transient and the transient would be uh, to give an example the attack and the hit of a pick or a plectrum on a guitar string. That's the transient. Or if I said a word, uh, it's the very kind of onset, normally the constant. So if we say zero millisecond, we're saying clamp down on that transient, clamp down on the attack of the note, or clamp down on the very beginning of the word. Uh, let's think of a word like consonant. You can hear the k at the beginning, the consonant. That onset is the attack. And with zero, we're saying compress that. But if we change it to 200, what that means is that the attack and the transient isn't compressed at all. Instead, everything afterwards is compressed. So this means that the attack of the guitar uh, pick on the string or the hit of the drumstick on the drum or the kind of aggressiveness of your speaking and the, the first, first sound and the consonant is uncompressed. And instead, we're compressing the audio afterwards. So think of attack time as controlling how much attack there is. And when it's zero, there's not a lot of attack. And when it's really high, there is a lot of attack. So you can kind of think of this as when it's low, you're turning the attack and the, the kind of aggressiveness down. And when it's high, you're turning the aggressiveness up. Release is different. Release is more about tuning it in time with the music. If there is also release, you can just use that and that normally works fine. If you notice anything weird or you notice that um, the graph is moving really quickly, then that's when you can tune the release time. And normally with release, you just want to adjust it until it's breathing in time with the music. So that's the basic compressor settings. We can also adjust the knee. If I go onto the graph here, this is showing you um, how much it's going to compress. So if I turn this up really high, we can see with a zero knee, as soon as it hits the threshold, which is minus 24, which you can see here, it's gonna start compressing it at a 30 to one ratio. So it's really aggressive. As soon as it hits that threshold, it's compressed. But when we turn the knee up, it adds this gradual change. 
So now the further above the threshold, the more it's compressed, but it also gets compressed as it approaches the threshold. You can see the difference. So now we're even compressing at minus 25 and um, maybe minus 26. Whereas there, it's only compressing when it hits minus 24. So what this means is that a high knee sounds really natural and subtle and works really well on something like vocals where you don't want the compression to be noticeable. Whereas a hard knee is better for controlling drum hits or stuff that's really aggressive and really dynamic and we need to really control it um, fast and, and effectively. So generally you can go somewhere in the middle and if you're using vocals, turn it up. If you're using drums, turn it down. But a lot of the time you can't even control the knee like in these different ones. Now let's actually have a listen and watch the compressor in action. So let's start with um, the threshold. So if we bring the ratio quite high so that we can dial in a good sound and then we'll make it subtle afterwards. And let's bring the knee down as well. Let's start with just a, a normal attack. Um, just go up the middle. Now what we're going to do is bring the threshold up to zero and we're going to bring it down until we start to see the compressor working and this needle start moving. Now love don't come easy, easy this time. You made a bad man out of me and that can hardly breathe. So need a love, now love don't come easy. So now you can hear as soon as the compressor starts engaging, the volume really starts dropping. And this is telling us at all times how many dBs the gain is being reduced by the compressor. So if it's hovering around minus 10, that means we're applying 10 dBs of gain reduction. So then we'd have to turn the makeup gain to 10. And now love don't come easy, easy come. You made a bad man out of me. Like so. And now we can also see on the graph um, where it's hovering at. Now love don't come easy, easy. Oh, turn it on. Now love don't come easy, easy. Come. You made a bad man out of me. And this is a really good view that you don't have in most doors. You can literally see how when the waveform gets louder, the compressor is dropping it lower. And you could see where it was hovering around here. So in terms of the logic compressor, we've got lots of different features. Um, some of them have knee and attack, some of them just have attack and release. Not all of them have even attack and release controls. And what I'm going to do now is just go through these different compressors and show you how they sound a bit different. And now love don't come easy, easy this time. You made a bad man out of me and I can hardly breathe. Cause I need a love. Now love don't come easy. So different sources will suit different compressors. I really like the sound of Studio FET um, on these vocals, but every time you use compression, just scroll through and find one that sounds good um, and then tweak the settings. But of course, before you do that, you need to make sure that it's actually applying some gain reduction. So now let's bring the ratio back down to something a bit more normal and let's aim for maybe five dBs of gain reduction. And now love don't come easy, easy this time. You made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly breathe. Cause I need a love. Now love don't come easy. Now let's just as an example experiment with the attack time. And you'll notice when this is really high. And now love don't come easy. Compressor doesn't react as much, whereas when it's really low. And now love don't we're suddenly compressing minus 10. And that's because when it's at 200, a lot of the, the loudest parts of the word, which are the beginning, are actually slipping through. So that's why with vocals, we actually need quite a quick attack time, maybe around five milliseconds. And now love don't come easy, easy but now listen to how, as I increase it, it starts to sound more aggressive. And now love don't come easy, easy you made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly breathe. And there's normally a sweet spot between 5 and 15. And now love don't come easy, easy this time. And always remember to check the, the plug-in bypass to make sure you're actually improving the sound. And now love don't come easy, easy 
Now I really like the sound of this compressor, so I'm going to drive it a bit harder, and I don't normally go this aggressive with vocals, but let's give it a go. Now off, don't come easy, easy smile. You made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly breathe. Cool. Now, just to quickly go over some of the other features, sidechain allows you to um, actually duck the gain according to a different instrument, which we're going to talk more about in a later section. Output, we can also turn on the limiter, and this means that the volume will never peak above zero. And we can also add distortion. Now, now don't come easy, easy you made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly now, if we turn on the limiter, we can adjust the threshold of the limiter. Now, off, don't come easy, easy you made a bad man out of me. And this means the volume will never go above minus 9.1. The mix knob is very handy because this allows us to mix the dry signal with the compressed signal. So one trick called uh, parallel compression is normally you have to do this by duplicating the track um, is to is to create a duplicate version and compress it hard and then bring it in just sitting underneath the vocal but instead we can do that with logic just by using this mix knob so if we dial in some really aggressive compression You made a bad man out of me. Now what we can do is actually just bring it in underneath. Now off, don't come easy, easy style. You made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly breathe. So that's really good just to kind of add a, another layer of compression to the vocal that's still quite subtle. Uh, it sounds really good on drums as well. We can just add it to the drum bus. Now off, don't come easy, easy style. You made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly breathe. Cause I need a learn. Now off, don't come easy, easy style. You made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly breathe. Cause I need a learn. Now off, don't come easy. You made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly breathe. Cause I need a learn. Now, off, don't come easy. Easy start. You can just hear how that makes the drums punchier, uh, but it's not that noticeable. Um, and you can just bring it in underneath, normally a bit subtler than that. As ever, I highly recommend you go away and actually implement this stuff. Go and practice using the stock compressor in Logic, get to know it stick to that one compressor. Even if you have other paid compressors that you're not really happy with, I highly recommend just sticking to the stock Logic compressor because it's so versatile and it means every time you reach for compression in a mix, you don't have to think about what compressor to use. You just go for this and then you get the sound you want. So practice using this, practice using compression in general by sitting down for focused practice. Don't just expect to mix all your tracks and um, every time you load up a mix, you're kind of half practicing, half mixing. Instead, I highly recommend you sit down for focus practice. For example, just grab a vocal and play around with compression on it. Try and get different sounds. Try and make it sound really thick and heavy, then try and make it sound really aggressive and punchy. And just sit down for half an hour and practice using compression. That's gonna help so much and help you to progress much faster. Now, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to check out the course. There's a link in the description below. And inside that, there's over 10 hours worth of video content going over every single feature in Logic Pro 10. By the end, you're gonna feel so confident with this software and you're gonna be able to focus on what really matters, which is making music, mixing, and the stuff you love doing. So either way, thanks again for watching. I'm Rob Mazes of musicianonamission.com and I'll see you again soon.